View from the Gutters presents Singles Club, Episode 6. Welcome to View from the Gutters presents Singles Club, the special mini show where we review an independent or small press comic book. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Singles Club. As always, I'm your host, Tobias Panchin. On this episode, we're looking at a web comic called Above the Clouds by Melissa Paliuka. This comic was recommended to me by a listener, Tony Asaro. And so I wanted to start with a brief thank you to Tony for the recommendation. So what is Above the Clouds about? The story is operating on a couple of different levels. On the first level, we have a medieval society. The first page opens with ladies in fine dresses and a castle in the background, and they're welcoming home a band of warriors dressed in leather and chain armor. And our point of view character here is a girl named Eilie, who seems to be very interested in one of the returning warriors, a young man named Kian, who seems to be a few years older than her. Upon his return from wherever, since it's not stated, Kian gives Eilie a book, which is our window into the second level of the story. The book, which is apparently written by Kian, tells the story of a mysterious caretaker one of the people of the sky who watch over the elder tree. The tree is attacked by a dragon who kills the other people of the sky and throws the world into disorder. The caretaker then sets out to stop the dragon and restore the elder tree. The story of the caretaker is, however, unfinished, at least initially, and Eilie begs Kian to write more while also providing illustrations of what she thinks the characters look like. Now, what's really interesting here is that Aili and Kian's story is told entirely without dialogue. The only words that we see in the comic are those which are written down. So we have access to Aili and Kian's letters to one another, as well as the narration and dialogue within the story of the caretaker and the dragon which Aili is reading, but we can't hear their own dialogue, nor that of the other people inhabiting the castle. This creates an interesting dynamic within the comic as we seesaw back and forth between the voiced story within the unvoiced story. It's not a device that I've seen done in this particular way before, and I think it forced me to think more deeply about the characters and their motivations, and how the story with the caretaker might reflect or relate to Eileen and Kian's lives. Now, I have to be totally honest. Dialogueless stories usually don't resonate very well with me. They leave a lot of the story to inference, or simply left untold. However, Melissa does a really good job in this instance. Her characters are visually emotive, and I never felt like I didn't understand what was happening or why, although some of the story specifics in terms of the characters' relationships are known to us only because the author states them on the cast page. It's an unfortunate limitation of the style, but in this case I think it's worth it because the silence adds to the experience of the comic more than it detracts. It's also interesting that in the caretaker story, we see the characters as Eilie envisions them, which we see through her drawings. There's an exchange early on in which Eilie and Kian debate the gender of the caretaker, and it's clear that they see the story differently. The fact that we see things as Eilie draws them indicates to me that the story within the story is as much about Eilie's impressions and relationship to the book she's reading as it is an engaging story for us, the readers of the comic. Which circuitously brings me around to talking about the art. The comic has an interesting style that pairs flowing line work with this very richly textured color that gives it a sort of fairy tale feeling. I think there's a lot of very subtle and excellent work being done here with the color palettes, the panel layout, and the way the shots are framed, which gives this story a lot more yarg than you get strictly from what's happening within the plot. While Above the Clouds is kind of rough around the edges, 
It's a beautifully drawn work that does a lot of heavy lifting with these very small flourishes. And there are two examples I wanted to point out in particular. The first is in chapter 3, page 19, where Eile is reading a note from Kian. The note is in an open panel, which runs beneath the panels both above and below it, so that only the one line of the note we need to see is visible. Eile's hair in the panel above is also above the panel to its left. This layering effect gives a really dynamic feeling to the page that might otherwise be really static. The other example is on page one of chapter four, where Eile is being fitted for a dress. And the panel is bordered with measuring tape, needles, and ribbons. And this border mutates into falling leaves as we shift from Eile's story into the story of the caretaker. Again, this is a subtle trick that lends dynamic action to the page guides the eye, and weaves the two stories together in a way that feels fluid rather than abrupt. These are two notable examples, but the comic is full of little visual flourishes like these that are largely invisible if you're not looking for them, but which make all the difference in the world to a visual story like a comic book. They serve to guide the reader without being intrusive in the way that a narration box is, disrupting the flow of the page and breaking the reader's immersion. I strongly encourage you to check this comic out for yourself because this is a really good example of how well-done colors and layouts can really carry a story and elevate it to another level. We often talk on the comic book club about freshman efforts, and there's more to this idea than simply being the first work, or perhaps more accurately, the first widely known work of a creator. I think. I think a key component of the concept is the idea that while some element of the execution might be lacking, there's something that really captures your attention. My two go-to examples are Jamie McKelvey drawing Phonogram and Wes Anderson directing Bottle Rocket. In hindsight, both works have a number of recognizable flaws. But you can see the nugget of the artist that each creator grew into over time as they became more comfortable in their respective medium. In that sense, Melissa is definitely going on my list of people whose works I'm keeping an eye out for, and I really hope to see more comics from her in the future. I really feel like she has the potential to grow into a great artist and just needs time to further develop her skills and style. If you'd like to check out Above the Clouds for yourself, you can read all of what's been released to date at atcloudscomic.com. It's also been collected into three print issues, available for $6 each via Etsy, which you'll find a link to at the same website. Thank you for listening, and we'll be back very soon with another episode of Singles Club. Bye, everybody. Thank you for listening to this presentation of View from the Gutter. View from the Gutters is featured on theouthousers.com and the Comic Podcast Network. Keep up to date with everything that we're doing on our website at viewfromthegutters.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And if you enjoyed the show, please leave us a review on iTunes, as it does help new listeners find our show. Thanks for listening, everybody. And as always, keep reading.